tighten each binder. The thing to remember is to alternate your binders on the front and rear of the coil, as this will ensure that you can tighten and loosen each binder. On shotgun coils, there must be. Right there. You're just teardropping, you're just making a giant teardrop, bringing your chain back up on top. Of course, you'll put your binder in the center, pull your slack in, and bind it down. But that's a, that's a bulkhead right there. Yeah, it's not that. It's not that. Now, remember on a bulkhead, four high is all you're ever going to go. If you go higher, it's just going to be top heavy. It's not going to do a thing for you. If you go higher, you have to go wide. But most drivers carry about eight pieces of four by four on their truck. That way they got four for their bulkhead. Then they got four for dunnage back across the truck. That's a bulky. Very easy, very simple. Right, Jason? Yes, sir. All right. Moving right along here. footers most of the uh, Mac trailers have it it says place coil here so you don't go by the center light on a 53 foot but a 45 center light is the center of the truck so if you're loading long product first you got to know how long is it it's 30 feet long flatbed and you're gonna load everything off the center <laughs> So, if this is my center, let's say this state pocket's my center, I want half of my product in front of the light, half of my product behind the light. From state pocket to state pocket is two feet. On the new extreme trailers, it's very noticeable. From state pocket to state pocket, it's four feet. They just didn't put this other one in. But like on this one, it's two feet. So if my product was 15 foot or uh, 30 foot long, I want 15 foot in front of the light. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve. Then build your bulkhead. When you get to 15 foot, build your bulkhead. Hey, so, Wayne, let me ask you a question. Why, yeah. why do they call these state pockets for? Just curious. For like a, uh, you know, the old covered wagons? Okay. Those that's two where four. they set the stakes at for Got, the boards. Gotcha. That's what, that's what they're actually for. But, uh, so that's how you're going to load long product. Loading coal. If you're loading one coal, you always set it dead center. If you're loading two coals, you're going to set one right behind center, one right in front of center. Now, the crane operators and stuff, they know this. They are always going to load the heavier one to the rear. You don't have to go try to find out which coal is which. They know. You're going to set the heavy one to the rear, the lighter one to the front. If you're loading three coils, you load number one heavy center, number two heavy here, number three heavy here. If you go four coils, number one, number two, number three, number four, you just keep splitting it out. The reason for that, spread actual trail. You're allowed to haul 40,000 pounds on that spread axle. So technically, by law, I can set a 40,000 pound coil about right there where Jason's at, tie it down and haul the mail. You don't want to do that, all your weight's back there, knows what the trailers look like there. All right, yo coil board. If you look at the end of it, you got a beveled in. That bevel's always got to be facing in because you're making a cradle. You want to set it in just like that. Also, another quick thing, pre-trip your coil boards. 
you going to set a 40, 50,000 pound coil on that behind your head? Nope, that's firewood. Every one of our terminals, you can get another coil board. Don't be using stuff like that. That's done coming apart. Set that right there. Now these are DOTable. Between that board and the coil, you have to have a, they call it a friction mat. You can use strips, that's fine. Most time I'm just gonna use two. Some guys will use one friction mat for every coil rack they have. So you can, I mean, it's no problem, come back. Add three in there. Not a thing. But you need at least two of them. Right, Bruce? Yeah, I'm just, uh, if you use, if it's, well, if you got slinkies, then yeah, that makes sense. But if on, on, on the spool type of coil, I'm thinking, that's doing no good because there's nothing on it. The middle one I'm talking about. Oh, this one? Yeah. Well, yeah, the coil's going to set all the way down in that thing. Well, no, I'm just saying, like, if, you're, if you've got, you know, a, a spool, you know, you got to, one touching here and one touching that one, but that's not touching it. Right, right. Uh, but usually, if you're going to be hauling spools, they're not going to be in coil ranks. Because, again, it's going back to that weight issue thing. But uh, that right there is set up for a suicide coil. Think about your boards. Your boards are crossways so, of the trailer. Just like that's going that to put one. your eye crossways of the trailer. So that means if it rolls, it's rolling over you. Now, another general rule of thumb, trucker thing. If you're loading a coil, now you can see these out of NAS, especially if you have a live load or something. NAS has a lot of little bitty coils. General rule, if they're telling you you're getting a 18,000 pound coil, go ahead and have another coil board out handy. Because the only thing you're going to do is piss that crane operator off when you go up here and dig around in your truck for 20 minutes getting another coil board out. A 20,000 pound coil or less, it's usually going to be a small coil. It's going to be small. Now, in the video and stuff, it said one inch off the trailer deck, no more than three inches. That was what I always was taught and shown. I've actually went back and read through that green book. As long as that coil is not touching the trailer deck. So you can have that much, but no more than three inches. Because if you get over three, it's not sitting in your cradle, it's sitting on top of it. So as long as you have gap in there. 20,000 pounds or less. I always try to set it up. Try to, it's never gonna work out perfect. But try to set it up where the center of your coil is in between two coil racks. The reason for, if it's a small coil, I could teardrop my chain right there for six o'clock. My forward chain could drop down right here, come back to right there to hook. My rearward chain on this coil could drop down here, back here to hook. See, I just planned all that out right there. And you always want your hook, you said, facing, correct? Facing the chain, yep. Now, if it was a big coil and I was going to drop two chains at 6 o'clock, still, I could come out at 6 o'clock, one chain down here, up here to hook, one here, back there to hook, two chains at 6 o'clock. Did you have a hook on the state Yeah. Now, through it, though, you said right on the outside. Well, now, you can come up through it and hook, or you can come up on the back side of it and hook. Either one, it does not matter. You just can't take a strap. What, through here? Yeah, a strap won't go through that. It'll come so up this one. Basically, 26,000, you're going to throw three chains. Now, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock. Right. On a shotgun, first thing you're going to do is throw your straps over. Now, this remember, where you're gonna spider straps, web, chains right? goes down between the trailer and the rubber. You're spider web this one, right? While you're understanding right there, spider web if you'll feel right in under right the edge of that trailer, back over there's here. a flat plate. Yep. Get back over here, over here. Every one of All our trailers to the eye of a shotgun has a plate from nose to rear. Gotcha. And that's where you hook the straps Bye -bye. onto all night. 
chain. Yeah. Now you X them inside of inside of these. Yeah, like a spider. Keep growing legs. All right. Up next. Catch me here it comes. Now, of course, this was probably a little damp. Yeah, look at that. Get the deep. It's the deep. <laughs> ah. On a shotgun coil. Now, this one's off just a little bit, but you'll take that coil rack, set it even with that steak pot. Try to set that coil rack even with your steak pot. When you set that even, you're gonna have about eight inches of wood sticking up past your coil rack. So if my coil rack's right here, eight inches of wood, it's gonna come up to about right there, right? Now, as he's setting that coil down, you can use the face of this coil as a gauge. Set the face of the coil about four inches a past your coal rack. So that way you still got a little bit of wood sticking out in front of your coal. When you do that, it's going to line up to about right here where it's at. But number one chain comes right about coal, right down the face. Down here, remember, go down and back to hook. When you run your second set of chains, it'll come down the face, down to here, up here to hook. I got two chains right down the face of that coal. That clear as mud, ain't it? Runners uh, between the beams, the roofing stuff, so it can be a multitude of things. But remember, the tear strapping <coughs> running through the center, and then strap. Of course, on bull crap, it's going to be strapped because it's pal uh, it's a. Uh, Is this thing that's supposed to be? One yeah, that's that's a strap. That's just one strap. You would just do the opposite with another strap. That would make the X chain. Now, of course, uh, you, Bruce, think about it. North American stainless. Stainless steel. Stainless plates. You're not chaining stainless plates. It's going to be straps. Uh, but you'll do your tear strapping in it. You can do the X strapping across the front. And then you're adding your straps over the top to cover the weight of the load. So, would you do that? Would have took this one? Come across through here, come under. Come yeah, if you was doing an X strap, you would actually have took this one and it would have come up across right here. And then it would have went underneath over there. So when it done that, it would place the X. If you look at the if you look at the back of it, we got two chains back here. This chain's coming under and back over the top. This chain's coming under and back over the top. So now you can see it placed in the X right there. So if you're having an X chain, that would be X chaining, or you'd X strap, X strap. But we need two back here as well, right? Well, no, not on the back. I would just put one on the rear because you're not going to slide this off the truck. <coughs> it's these center ones, even with it tied down, especially like out of NAS, you'll have a bundle of plate and they'll be like 15, 20 sheets. Then they'll have a runner, then I'll have another little bundle. Well, they 15, 20 sheets there. One of them things will always try to walk out of them. Yeah. Also, why you strap Because even with all these trailers, with these trailers with these big coils on it, when it's loaded, that trailer has still got an arch to it. This plate is actually sitting on a downhill slope. So that this rear, if you go down the road, it'll keep doing that. Yeah, so across these, across the front, two across here, three in the woods. Well, it depends what you weight the stuff is. But I wouldn't do two on the rear, I'd just do one. <laughs> yeah, just kind of like that front is up there. I just turn the truck around. Right. This is the nose of her truck now. I got the X in the front and one in the rear. Okay. How's that? Wayne, when you strap them, you also because it's standing still. It looks like the sides of the truck. Oh yeah, yeah. You'd have to protect the sides of it. Uh, 
because if that moves any there at all, it'll slide through the track wide open. So felt pads, <coughs> uh, your uh, plastic V boards, you can use those uh, it's for your edge. You get an old strap, you know, cut this strap up. An old strap will make a good edge protector also. Yeah, so what's the weight on the strap? 54. Well, you've got, we use, you've got a broken load in 400. We use one strap for every 8,000 pounds. And like we said, you know, on long product, trucker rule, two within the first 10 feet of the load, one every 10 feet after. But again, yeah, trucker, trucker rule, two in the first eight feet, one every eight feet thereafter. Yeah, you're going to be so over secure. Yeah. Oh, that was a truck going across the speed bump. That wasn't thunder. Bunch of chickens. Somebody dragging their tires. That's what it is. <laughs> Trying to slide their tandem. I'm in this bull wagon over here beside the scales. Anybody want to help me slide my tandem? Whoop, right. I found a bar. So now this is the Conestoga wagon that I'll be pulling. Merlot Van Gogh. Who's my flex driver? Right here. There's one. Who else is flex? Jonathan. Jonathan's flex. All right, Jonathan, undo that right there. And this don't take no rocket science to figure this out. Then that just kind of Hang on there, Pee Wee. I'm going. I'm, I'm going to save you life. Trust me, I'm going to save you. This one. Yeah. Again, it don't take no rocket science to figure this out. Well, you can't do it one-handed. How's that? <laughs> and that just flips around. Now, on the Conestoga, you guys, do not leave your bar just laying in there. Okay. It's an unsecured will, load as far as right? This thing will walk right out. It'll fall right out on the highway. Bunch it in there or something. Okay? Oh, ow! Watch out. Look at Take the little Duma Muflogy, you stick it in the thing of the ditcher. You like it, don't you? Do <laughs> and then you give your hand. And then you just roll it up. Now, this one you've got to learn a little bit. You've got to stop it short and kind of get in under it. You're going to pick it up and flip it at the same time. Well, maybe not. Come on now. Okay. Trust me, the new ones are a lot better. Y'all flat better want to be kind of stoked as now, don't you? <laughs> we are going to really worry about the flex tomorrow. We're just opening this one up right now. Take your bar. Very back up here. You're just going to loosen it up. Now. You reach right up in under here, and you look through the back right there. You take it off of that, lay that down, grab your arm, pick it up, right down inside the trailer. Sure, yeah. You gotta do the other side. <laughs> other side. <laughs> other side. <laughs> Got some slankies in here. <laughs> so loosen, loosen it up. Pull it down. Pull it down. Pull it down. Now raise your bar right up. Take the bar out. Now you can pull your strap. Pull it back towards you. Yep. Learn that. Now grab that big post. 
do something my hair ain't gonna fall. Yeah. Pick it up. Say wrap it back down so yeah, I can try Now, kind of stogie driver. I'm going to save you life right here. I'm going to save you life. Okay. First thing you do, because I'm right handed, right? Yep. I grab this and I go go, right? Look where that crease is. You know what a flat rock feels like when a cow is peeing on it? You're fixing to find out. <laughs> that crease is right there on top of your head. When you hear it, it's too late. It's, it's done what you're done with. So, best way to do it is get back here. Watch out, That's kind of sexy. Man, a lot of them, a million years, we'll call that person to do that. A lot easier to call. <laughs> hey, I'm going. Hey, you got to get that thing out of here. Yeah. Grab your top run right there. Grab your top run right here. Put them together. Double hand over top. Back up. Whole body. Booyah! Boom! Kind of snug, baby. <laughs> What's up everybody? What is going on? Arr. Arr. It was a long day yesterday. So I left Lexington um, probably around 10.30, 11 o'clock. Um, drove down to uh, near Pittsburgh to get my truck and then ran over here uh, by Brookville, Indiana to pick up a trailer because the place that I got in my truck, they didn't have any uh, Conestoga wagons. And that's what I'm pulling right now is, is doing the Conestoga. So, I'll be coming out here next couple of days of, uh, of actually where I've moved to. But, so I got here last night. I probably, it's probably about 10 30. So, got out, hooked to a, a brand new brand new uh, trailer and when I went on to my ELDs to put them the trailer information put in my truck information put my trailer information it wasn't there the trailer wasn't in the system at all so I called operations and they said you know uh, sign out sign back in did that still wasn't there they said well uh, I'll go ahead and attach it to uh, to the truck and just check on it again in the morning after you come out of your you know your 10-hour break okay sweet so that's what I did um, got up this morning uh, didn't get my hours back until 15 till 9, um, which is a late, late start for me, but it is what it is. So then, uh, still wasn't in the system. All right, so uh, 
Sean, the safety guy where I was actually training at, he, he's out of this terminal. So luckily I, he was just walking in as uh, I was walking out. And I said, hey man, uh, cause he's the, the safety uh, guy over here. And I said, hey man, my, my, my trailer's not in the system. I know it's gonna mess up my logs. Um, so what can we do about it? And same thing, log out, log in, boom, it's not there. Well, long story short, the trailer is so new that it doesn't, it has not been entered into the system yet and it does not have a gateway uh, tracking system. So I'm in the shop right now after getting ready to go to get my load. <clears throat> Looks like, um, first load is going to be a bundle of shingles so was rolling out and Sean was coming out waving his hands and all right pulled over here and that's what he was telling me that they they got to install the gateway system and enter it into the system as far as the trailer so you know first week's always a got hiccups learning the system learning you know their ways of doing things um, I actually came down yesterday uh, was not supposed to be even in Ohio until this morning but I figured to try to get a jump start on everything this is what I do come down yesterday because they said that at the place where I was getting my truck in how many trailers I'd have to go over here so I was like you know I'll just go ahead and do that come down Sunday boom be ready to roll up Monday morning and it's trucking you know it is trucking so you run into some hiccups and that's just the nature of the business but we'll get it taken care of We'll get on down the road and uh, I'll holler back here shortly.